From weird mummies and standing stones to secret vaults and ancient temples, here are 14 of the most mysterious and unusual archaeological finds. The Cockno Stone also called the Druid Stone, the object was discovered in Scotland in 1887 and is considered to be one of Europe's most important works of art. To protect it from vandals, it was buried near Clyde Bank at the edge of a council housing estate. The slab of rock is etched with carving from the Stone Age and dates back some 5,000 years. Measuring 42 feet by 26 feet 13 meters by 8 meters, the stone slab is covered with grooved indentations and spirals referred to as cup and ring. Experts suggest the petroglyphs might have been used for marking hunting grounds or other territories. They might even represent a unit of measurement. Archaeologists re-exposed it a few years ago to conduct an in-depth investigation. So far, there's no definitive conclusion regarding the mystery of the stone's carvings or the prehistoric people who made them. Chariot and Two Horses in 2013, the complete remains of a chariot and two horses were uncovered in Bulgaria. They appeared to have been buried upright in a Thracian tome in Svestery, northeast Bulgaria. It has been dated back 2,500 years and likely belonged to nobility. The Thracians were an Indo-European tribe that populated Central and Southeastern Europe, establishing a kingdom in the 5th century. Sadly, the horses appear to have been killed, having pulled the chariot into the tomb. This was considered after experts realized they were still harnessed to the carriage even in the tomb. A dog had also been chained to the chariot, which was a surprising discovery given the plundering of surrounding tombs. Lothagam North Pillar Site This location in northern Kenya contains a main burial mound with stone circles, cairns, and megalithic stones flanking it. Researchers say it was built by some of the region's earliest inhabitants. Calling it a burial ground gives away the area's purpose. What you might not expect is the site's age and immensity. Dating to 3000 BC, archaeologists say this is the largest and earliest monumental cemetery in East Africa. Hundreds of individuals are thought to have been buried here over the course of 500 years. It was a planned project that spanned several generations. But it is still debated whether all of the community's members were interred there, or only the elite. What is for certain is that each body was placed within a central cavity measuring about 3 feet deep, less than 1 meter. Many of them were adorned with ivory, stone beads, and other jewelry. A few individuals were found with ornaments made from hundreds of gerbil teeth. Some people might find that kinda strange. What do you think? The Edinburgh Vaults after their construction in 1788, this series of chambers located underneath the city's south bridge went on to serve several different purposes. The vaults were originally used for workshops and storage spaces by taverns and other merchants located underneath the bridge. On a lower level, there were living quarters. After three decades, the vaults had fallen into extreme disrepair, and most of the businesses abandoned the chambers. But that vacuum was soon filled by the homeless people who set up camp there. The vaults became a subterranean hotspot of ill repute. Criminals ran a black market trafficking stolen goods, while gambling venues and illegal distilleries popped up. According to some stories, murderers used the vaults to hide the bodies of their victims, but living conditions became so compromised that almost every occupant was forced out of the area by the 1870s. The location was shut down and forgotten until the 1980s when they were discovered by accident. The vaults were later excavated and became linked to paranormal activity involving spirits and disembodied voices. That, along with its strange history, has made the vaults a popular tourist attraction in the 21st century. Ramses II Aged more than 90 years when he died, Ramses II reigned for six decades and is often regarded as the most powerful pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Upon death, he was entombed in the Valley of the Kings, as was customary. It was later moved to another location to foil looters. In 1881, the mummy was found in an area known as the Royal Cache, which contained 50 other nobles and rulers. While pictures of Ramses' mummy can look pretty harsh, experts thought he was in remarkable condition. But in the 1970s, the body was deteriorating, and it was flown to France for treatment. He was issued a passport for the trip, which listed his occupation as king. Deceased. Rongo Rongo Writings Easter Island is famous for the mysterious Moai statues found there. 
But there's another mystery connected with Rapa Nui that isn't as well known. A series of glyphs known as Rongo Rongo was first documented by Catholic missionaries in the 19th century. It might represent a writing or proto-writing system, but that has yet to be definitively proven. Rongo Rongo texts and letter codes are inscribed on 24 wooden objects, most of them oblong tablets. The glyphs are written left to right and bottom to top. No direct dating has been done, but experts theorize the tablets were created no earlier than the 13th century. Several attempts have been made to decipher Rongo Rongo, but only a portion of one tablet was shown to be connected with a Rapa Nui lunar calendar. Apart from that, all efforts to understand the writings have failed. Some experts say that if Rongo Rongo is verified as writing, it would be one of the rare times in human history that such a system was invented independently. Pet Cemetery until the 14th century, the Chiribaya culture flourished in Peru. They lived in the Atacama Desert near the Pacific Ocean and predated the Inca Empire. There's even evidence suggesting that the earliest inhabitants arrived in the area prior to 7000 BC. That would coincide with the timeline of other indigenous people who practiced mummification thousands of years earlier than the Egyptians. That practice was evidently adopted by the Chiribaya culture. In 2006, archaeologists were excavating a 1,000-year-old cemetery where they found dozens of non-human specimens. 43 dogs had been interred in separate plots, all of them mummified and buried with food and blankets. Researchers say the animals were valued pets used for herding llamas. Since the desert climate preserved the dogs' remains so well, it was noted that they strongly resembled a modern breed found in southern Peru. DNA research was conducted to see if the ancient animals might be their ancestors, but the results are so far inconclusive. Lost Mayan City Possibly Found In 2016, William Gadori, a 15-year-old student from Quebec, may have found something that's eluded archaeologists for centuries a lost Mayan city in Mexico's Yucatan jungle. A rather complex system was used to compare the positions of known Mayan cities with maps of the stars above. Mr. Gadori found one star that did not align with any particular location. From that information, he theorized that the lost city of Cacchi could be located there. Satellite imagery of the area has revealed what could be interpreted as a series of man-made structures, and that includes a pyramid. However, the find is being disputed, and nothing has been confirmed at this point. Agar Eam That name translates as standing or worshipping stones, and refers to a location on the southwest coast or Malta that overlooks the Mediterranean Sea. The megalithic temples rank as one of the world's oldest religious sites. The complex consists of a main temple and three megalithic structures whose construction might predate 3600 BC. Some of the stones used for building the complex measure 23 feet by 10 feet, 7 by 3 meters, and weigh more than 44,000 pounds, 20 metric tons. That brings up the question of who exactly built this place. Researchers say there's little evidence to suggest there was a local civilization advanced enough to build the temples. Since the stones are aligned with the summer solstice, the temples may have served an astronomical function. Other evidence suggests the buildings may have been used as an oracle. Even though the temples have been around for a long time, the ruins weren't initially explored and excavated until the 1840s. Nabta Playa the Nubian Desert is described as an eastern region of the Sahara Desert. Located deep within the wasteland are numerous archaeological sites, the oldest of which has been dated to around 7500 BC. An ancient stone circle discovered there in the 1970s has evoked comparisons to the far better known Stonehenge, but the similarities go beyond a general appearance. The alignment of the stone suggests that the circle may have been used for astronomical calculations, not unlike Stonehenge. Some sources speculate that it may even represent a star map. If so, it might indicate the first stages of ancient Egyptian astronomy. It also indicates evidence of a society that was not previously documented in ancient Egypt. Whoever they were, they possessed an extraordinary understanding of astronomy and may have been one of the earliest Egyptian civilizations. Unfortunately, their identity may remain a mystery. The harsh desert climate might prohibit further excavation of the area. Metal Hand and Fingers in September of 2018, Swiss archaeologists announced the discovery of a 3,500-year-old metal hand made from over a pound of bronze. It's the earliest known metal representation of a human body part ever found in Europe. Treasure hunters originally discovered it using metal detectors in 2017 near Lake Biel in the western province of Bern, Switzerland. 
they got quite the surprise as they dug through the dirt and found some bones as well. That was a 3,500 year old burial site. The metal detector hobbyists did the responsible thing and turned it into authorities along with a nearby bronze dagger and rib bone. The piece is equipped with a socket that enabled it to be mounted on a pole or stick along with a gold foil cuff glued around the wrist. At first, archaeologists were skeptical. Andrea Scheer, head of the Ancient History and Roman Archaeology Department at the Bern Archaeological Service, told National Geographic, We weren't sure if it was authentic or not, or even what it was. Their suspicions were disproven after radiocarbon dating showed that the glue used to attach the gold foil dates back to between 1400 and 1500 BC, during the Bronze Age. Did you know that they had glue in the Bronze Age? The treasure hunters led experts back to where they made the magnificent discovery. There, archaeologists uncovered the badly damaged grave of a middle-aged man, containing more bones, a bronze hair tie, and gold foil fragments similar to those found on the artificial hand. Considering the rarity of metal objects in Bronze Age burials, as well as the scarcity of gold in such graves throughout Switzerland, the find was undoubtedly unique. Researchers are unsure exactly what the hand was used for or how it was used. Royal Palace of the Dark Ages Closely linked to the legend of King Arthur, this archaeological site in Tintagel, Cornwall has uncovered the remains of a potential Dark Age royal palace. The palace is thought to have been home to 6th century rulers of Domnonia, an ancient southwest British kingdom. Argument remains to be rife when it comes to whether or not King Arthur ever really existed, but legend says he was conceived at Tintagel, so this discovery is sure to give rise to more debate on the mysterious character. The palace's probably dating of between the 5th and 6th centuries AD fits neatly with the legend of Arthur. The lasting fascination with the medieval legend should bring this site plenty of interest from scholars, historians, and the general public alike. This is the first considerable building to be found from the Dark Ages in Britain, making it an exciting find regardless of its link to King Arthur. Meter-thick walls and slate flagstone floors have already been excavated. Pottery and glass reveal that the building's inhabitants enjoyed wine from Turkey and olive oil from the Greek Aegean, now Tunisia. Fine bowls and plates have been found and thought to be imported from Turkey and North Africa, as well as cups from French-made glass cups. This points to an elite people who may have lived in the palace. Vending Machines You might think it's strange to find this device listed as a mysterious and unusual archaeological find. After all, the first modern vending machines appeared in London during the 1880s. But a coin-operated vending machine was invented some 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece. Hero of Alexandria was a renowned mathematician and engineer credited with developing a device that dispensed holy water in temples. When a coin was inserted, a valve was opened by a lever allowing the liquid to pour out. When the appropriate amount of holy water was dispensed, a counterweight snapped the lever back up and shut off the valve. Among Hero's best-known inventions are the first documented wind-powered machines and steam engines. As for vending machines, the technology was forgotten until it re-emerged in the late 19th century. Early Viking Settlements If you still believe that Christopher Columbus was the first to discover, quote-unquote, the New World, this story should help reassess that notion. Laurence aux Meadows is an archaeological site on the Canadian island of Newfoundland. In the 1960s, researchers found the ruins of at least eight buildings. The similarities between structures and artifacts found here bore strong similarities to comparable sites in Iceland and Greenland that date to about 1000 AD. Laurence aux Meadows was later confirmed as the only Norse or Viking settlement in North America outside of Greenland. In 1978, UNESCO named it as a World Heritage Site. Predating Columbus by more than five centuries, it represents the farthest known point of European exploration and settlement of the New World. Additional locations have also been found in the region that may represent other outposts constructed by the Vikings. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Would you like to learn about more remarkable undersea discoveries? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time.